Johnny here in Australia, are we in danger of losing our, our natural character, our natural Aussiness? Australia, our national character. <laughs> <laughs> well, are we? I think it's already gone, Johnny. There was a time, uh, back 150 years, 100 years ago, where Australians, they had a thing in their head that, uh, of the type of person, the type of bloody person they wanted to be, or thought they were. His name was Macaulay. He put Australia at his feet the only way he knew how. Then he knocked me back. I was the only recruit that day, so we went out and got drunk. Hey, Johnny, they're smoking. Johnny, you know, they're not, they haven't got any safety helmets on. And it was especially the blokes, the blokes, the Aussie blokes, back in the 1920s or the 1890s or whenever. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you could say was the sort of bloke who could start a fire rubbing two bloody witchetty grubs together. <laughs> or fix a fan belt on his old fucking bomb of a car by getting his wife's pantyhose and making a fan belt out of them and doing all that sort of stuff. Ooh. And now, these days, I don't know whether you call it wokeism or too much bloody immigration or whatever, the Australian bloody image of a bloody tough knockabout sort of bloke or woman, it's completely eroded. <laughs> Jackaroo, think I see kangaroo yeah, eroded. Now there's this bloke in the US. He does this bloody podcasting. And he was talking about the bloody Australian survival show. You know, when they send these pricks out in the wilderness with nothing but a pair of bloody pliers or something, and they've got to survive out there, and uh, when they get bloody sick of it, they call up and, and a boat comes and picks them up. Well, he was talking about the Australian version of that. I know that show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this thing goes for a little while, Johnny, but uh, have a bloody look at it. All right, let's see it. We found out there's an Australian version of this show. Uh, and the, the, the American version's been around for like 10 years, and they just started last year with the Australian version. Now, I have happened across the fact that this show exists, and I thought, oh, you know, that sounds great. Like, first of all, surviving in Australia would be pretty tough. You think like Australia is a, uh, uh, is a is a dangerous place, and I also thought Australians are a hardy people. You know, uh, uh, I bet they could survive for months without tapping out. Usually, on the American version, you know, the, the winner survives ninety days, maybe at most a hundred days at most. Um, I thought Australians like they could this this show will go on for six years and they won't tap out. I mean, this this will be really interesting. So we started watching it and. It is good. Like, it's great, actually. But for a completely different reason. For the opposite reason. It's the opposite of what I expected. Which makes it unintentionally like the funniest show that I've ever seen. <laughs> um, but that's what they did. So they got ten contestants, just like the American version. So they ended up with two lesbians, uh, two people who claim to be indigenous, this like Gen Z environmentalist guy, um, one of the lesbians dropped out after one night, started crying, and dropped out after one night. Um, one of the indigenous guys, this is my favorite thing, like at least just watch the second episode of the show. It's, it's hilarious. This indigenous guy, he spends the whole first day like going on and on about how he's indigenous and he's in touch with nature and, you know, he can do this because he's indigenous. Oh, by the way, did you know I'm indigenous? I'm indigenous. I'm so indigenous. I'm the most indigenous, indigenous guy of all time. And then uh, he starts crying and drops out after 24 hours. Uh, because he was lonely. What? The Gen Z guy, I'm not making this up. I'm, I swear to you, I'm not making this up. The Gen Z guy, it's like 22 years old. He takes a COVID test out in the wilderness with a COVID test, and it comes back positive, and he immediately calls the med team to evacuate him. <laughs> he got COVID. COVID. COVID in the wilderness. <laughs> and starts complaining that his heart is racing. And he's, he's like, they're, they're, they, the med team comes in on their, their boat and they, they take him out and he's curled up in the boat, like shivering. 
And he just tested positive for COVID three, three minutes ago. Um, this was all on the first day. Right. Oh, Jesus. Time is a traveler. And a field saddle a turn ahead. Right again, Jackaroo. Think I see kangaroo up ahead. So, Johnny, is there any hope? Is there any hope for the the reemergence of this bloody uh, typical Australian character? It's breakfast. Tastes like roast turd. And if you're a Shearer's cook, you've either got to be good at cooking or good at fighting. They, they, they lost three people on the first day, all of them crying. Like, I could do better than this. I could at least... I have very few uh, the skills, survival skills of this type in the woods, but I could, I mean, I could hack it for a few days at least. And uh, another guy, another guy, so there's another in- indigenous guy. Uh, so the one guy's gone now. There's another guy who, by the way, looks totally, he's just a white guy. He's a complete white guy who keeps talking about how indigenous he is. <laughs> Oh, you can't say that sort of stuff here in Australia, Johnny. Oh, Jesus. Ugh. And uh, and all of his indigenous survival skills. Well, there's one scene, I think this is in the second episode, where he picks up a millipede, you know, like a, a little millipede, and it's, it's bright, it's a bright-colored millipede, and he eats it. He tries to eat it, and it makes his tongue, tongue numb, and he spits it out because it's toxic, because it's a millipede. You don't eat the anything that has that many legs. You don't eat it, of course. And if it's a bright colored insect with many legs, again, even I know that's you don't eat that. Meanwhile, each again, I'm not making this up. Each episode starts with a land acknowledgement. That's real. <laughs> oh Jesus! Um, there are all kinds of these woke environmental restrictions, so they aren't allowed to hunt pretty much any game. They can't even use a fishing net because the endangered platypus might get caught in the net. So they can't, they can't eat. Like, they, they're all there, and they can't eat anything. And on the rare occasion that they do catch something to eat, like with a makeshift fishing line, uh, most of them are, veg- are vegetarians. So they get really emotional about the fact that they have to eat. Vegetarians? Well, well, one woman, she caught an eel, and she was really sad. She was, like, crying while she was beating the eel to death because she's a vegetarian. And then she ate it and was like trying to stifle her vomit while she's eating this this poor creature. It's just I'm telling you, it is. Uh, it's just it's a bunch of woke whiny liberals sitting around crying and starving. So what were they expecting these poor bastards to eat? Yes, yes, you're right. You need a license to bloody kill a goanna and eat it. I'm sure. Jesus Christ! Now in the U.S., Johnny. They send out these bloody grizzled-looking hard bastards, and women too, and they go out there with knives and that, and they bloody hunt down moose, barehanded, or they get a bloody puma or something and strangle it and eat the puma and do all that sort of shit, and they're a pretty tough bloody bunch. Well, yes, yes, that's right. But here in Australia, Johnny, apparently the bloody show's a little bit different, and it's not given a bloody good impression of Australians overseas. i got to say, I... And I'm sure there are great people in Australia. Um, but my opinion of Australia, I'm just being honest with you, my opinion of Australians has just plummeted. Mm. Like before COVID, I thought that Australia was, first of all, a, a, an absolute hellscape where s- poisonous spiders rain from the sky. That part is true. But then I, but I, I, I further thought that because of that, anyone who lives there, these have to be like the toughest sons of on the planet. I really thought, I thought it was just Steve, I thought it was a whole country of Steve Irwin's. That's what I thought. And from COVID and now ending with this, I'm like, this, how is, how did Australia, how is Australia the weakest, wokest, lamest country on earth? How is that possible? Well, you have to admit he's right on that point, Johnny, for God's sake. Yeah, well, we sort of did display to the world our gutlessness. And if you have this few survival skills, how are you living in the country to begin with? I don't get it. It's amazing. Gone are the days when we were bloody. We were bloody diggers fighting for the mother country. 
I don't think we'll be fighting for the mother country much, but that's beside the point. Back then, we were. We had this belief on who we were and what we were doing and where we were going, and uh, the country seemed a hell of a lot better off. 20 years ago, you could, um, on a modest income, you could buy a reasonable house with a backyard on a normal income. Nowadays, it's, you know, you're lucky to rent an apartment. Really, who, who, who in their right mind would say that that's an improvement in your living standards? Well, Johnny, it's good to know that Australians are being held in such high regard overseas. It's so-